In this video, we are going to be looking at assumption of ordinary least square. So when we talk about assumption of ordinary least square, we are just trying to look at the conditions which we, which we must meet if you want to use ordinary least square. Because if you don't meet the condition, you might not be able to get predictable value at the end of using uh, the uh, least square estimator. Now, the first thing we do, we want to use ordinary least square, is just for you to, to build your model. But that is where the problem starts. Because if you don't take care of how you build your problem, uh, your uh, model, you might have problem at the end. And what do you do? You must ensure that the, the, the model you are building is linear in parameter. That is a very, very good assumption. So, so linear in parameter, your model must be linear in parameter. If you look at what I have here, this model I have here now, you look at the parameter, parameter, then the stochastic error, but this x is, is uh, a variable. Now, Parameter here must not have neither log nor power. Then this must have to not you must not have a log nor power. So none of your none of your parameter must have log nor power. So it means that when you write something like this, then it's no more linear. Or you put log, it's no more linear. So parameter must be free from anything called log nor power. Then your x can have it, of course, that is still is still linear in parameter. But your parameter, very, very important, must not have power. Must not have power. No, no. That makes it to be linear. That is the first assumption. Then the second assumption is that mean of error time will be zero. When you say mean of error time, we are talking about residua. Then what do we mean by residua? Residua is the difference between the point and the uh, its corresponding point on a uh, fitted line. Look at this now. Look at the points here. This scatter points here. So I can fit a line here now. But yes, I think it's correct. Yes, if I fit a line this way, you know, point is here, point is here, point is here, point is here. So when I fit line this way now, I fit this line. Now the line I fitted here, then I have some line above it. You know, when you look at the line I fitted here, there are points on them, of course. But there are some points above the line and below the line. Now, each of the points above the line has its own corresponding point on the fitted line. And the difference between the point and its corresponding point on the fitted line will give us our residual, our error, variance. Now, look at this line. Let's say this is 4. And the corresponding point of this on the fitted line is this, isn't it? Now, if this is 2 now, the difference between the 4 and 2 is going to be 2. That is the error. That is an error. Now, if you look at, let's say this is x1. If you even look at the x2, let's say this is x2. Uh, this is x2. Then if you look at this error here, this, this point here, the corresponding point is this. So, you find the error here, you find the difference here, it's going to be, give you a residual error. Likewise, if you try any other point, any other point, they will have their corresponding point, you know, they will have their corresponding point. On even this corresponding point of this will be this place, you know, of this point, the corresponding point will be here. So the difference between it will give you residual error. So the, now, when you have this now, something is very very important. You know, there's something I must very I must I must mention here. If you look at these points all together, we have some above the line and we have some below the line. So the one above the line will give us positive values because they are greater than the fitted line. And the one below the line will give us negative value because they are not up to the fitted line. You can see. So this can give us negative. Do you understand? Now, when you sum up the above, above error, that is the values here, and the below values, you sum it together, it's going to give you zero. That's why we say when you take the population of the errors, you sum it together, it's going to give you zero. And when you find mean of what is zero, definitely it's going to give you zero. You find mean of what is zero. Mean. Mean. No, our mean is summation x over n. Then you find mean of this. When summation of all this is zero, then number, maybe it's for anything, it's going to be zero. So because of that mean, mean of error time is already equal to zero because when the positive of short the that of the negative, it, it will take it away, take the negative away. That is the assumption. Now, one more important thing you need to understand when it comes to mean of error time is zero is it means that the average the average value of error time that is the the average expected value of error you know is going to be zero 
the average expected value of error is going to be zero. That is why when we have our observed here, this is observed, this is the observed uh, uh, equation here. But if you want to write the estimated one or, or predicted one, I put this sign on it to show that it's predicted one, which is here. Predicted this is my for the regression line. For the regression line, which is the average. Then the average here, I can rewrite it to be like this, my beta here plus my beta. Then I have to put this sign to show that it is the uh, regression line. That is the estimated one, estimated one. Now, I will not put, what am I going to do here? I'm going to put zero here because the assumption is that the mean of the error time must be zero. So I won't put the value here. That is why you see in your textbook that they don't put any value here because it's nothing. It's nothing for the estimated. That is the reason. Okay. Now, let's quickly move forward. The number three, no autocorrelation of view. What this is saying is that the, the variable, sorry, the error of each x has no relationship with su succeeding or preceding error value. What am I talking about? The x1, the, the error we get in x1, we don't have anything to do with the error we have in x2. And the error in x2 will not have anything to do with the error in x3. And the error in x3 will not have anything to do with the error in x4. So the value of our error is, is randomly selected. So they don't have they don't have a direction. So it means that the error we have for the x1 has no relationship with the error we have in x. So that we will not be able to predict it. That is just the essence. So the error that is the, the, the no autocorrelation, that is no relationship exists between the error of, in, of individual x to each other. So that is why we say that, uh, that, 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 there is no, that there is no relationship between the error you know, in the sample you know, taken. So the mean random of a period, uh, the, the mean uh, random, uh, or, let, let me just put it in a simple way that the, the value of each error has nothing to do with the subsequent value of error taken or derived from the x or i can put it like this that my x here the error of this x has nothing to do with the error of the succeeding x are you getting it now that is just what we mean about the no autocorrelation of error uh, then the last one is the error the error time is almost scedastic when you say almost scedastic it means that the spread or the variation is constant. The spread is constant, the variance is constant, the deviation is constant. Even that as the x increases, you know, look at this x now. As s increases now, you see that the variance, the spread, from, how do you know the spread? The spread is from the point here to the point here. That is the point here to its corresponding point on the on the fitted line. The point here to the corresponding point on the fitted line. The point here to the corresponding point on the fitted line. If you look at it now, I can just have this line now. I can have this line. You know, I can have this line. Then for this place now, I can have this line. If you look at the line now, you see that even as x is increasing, this value, the the the, 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 the deviation, the variance is not becoming larger. That is, is constant. The variance is constant. It maintains its position. That is almost scedastic. It's just, you know, equally spread. But when I have a situation that as x is increasing, then the variable is not maintaining this point. It could just come here. As x goes to x3, it comes here. Let's go to x4. It comes here. You know, then this one also increasing, increasing, increasing. Then I'll be having something like this. Maybe from here, I'll be having something like this. You can see that is heteroscedastic. Heteroscedastic. You can see as x increases, increases, then the, 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 the error also increases. That is heteroscedastic. Heteroscedastic. When you have heteroscedastic, you can't use it for OLS like this. So for what we do we use, we use that of uh homoscedastic that the error time is what is constant. That is why we say variance. The variance is constant. Variance of u with respect to s is sigma squared. So that is almost scedastic. Almost scedastic is just a situation whereby the variance of u is constant. That is, is the same for all observation. Is the same for all observation. That is, that is just what we are trying to do. Let me just give you the summary. The first one is that you must have linear in parameter. Your parameter must be linear. And number two is that your error time must be zero. So the error time must be zero. 
mean that when you take the population of the error, the positive will be upshot, the, the negative, and when you find the mean is going to be zero, and it means that individual error, we all of, of individual x will have average of error, uh, error value. Or I can put it like this that individual x will have uh, an average of zero error value. Then the no, that is no autocorrelation. It means that the, the variable, the, the error of the first x has nothing to do with the error of the second x. That x1 error has nothing to do with the x2 uh, error. And x2 error has no relationship with the x3 error. Then the error time is almost elastic. It means that uh, uh, the, 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 the variance of, of this uh, x we have is constant. That is, as x is increasing, the error. But the variable or the, the error does not increase, which is uh, uh, in contrast with heteroscedastic. Please subscribe and get more of our video. Thank you.